Friedrich Nietzsche, a man of witty aphorisms, harsh criticism, profound ideas, and one hell of a mustache. And I don't think it's hyperbole to suggest that Nietzsche is one of the greatest philosophers in history. His writing is eloquent, it's provocative, and his narratives on culture still prevail as quite useful and relevant in today's discourse. So with all that said, I'm excited to invite you all to read his works along with me all throughout November. This is a series I've been wanting to do basically since I started this channel. And coincidentally, there's only one month that starts with the letter N. So we're going to roll with it, Nietzsche November. So what this series is going to be is a weekly video where we're going to discuss one of Nietzsche's works and break down the themes, core concepts, quotes, and anything else that stuck out to me when reading one of his books or rereading some of the books I've already read. Now, obviously, I don't expect you all to read all these books that quickly, especially if you're going to read them with care and intention. So what I'm going to do is break down the reading list, why I selected those books, and also what sections we're going to be focusing on. So at least you can refer back to those certain sections in the book, read those, and then come watch the video and join in the discussion. The first book is going to be The Birth of Tragedy, which only makes sense because it was Nietzsche's first book published in 1872. And the reason I selected this book is not only because it's his first work, but primarily because you start to see a lot of his ideas start to form here. You see the influence of the Greeks, specifically the pre-Socratics in this work. You see him discuss again the Greek tragedies. You also see Schopenhauer's influence on Nietzsche and his philosophy. And also you see this relationship between him and Richard Wagner. So for that reason, I think it's a great work to start with and kind of build this foundation before we move on to his later works. Week two, we're going to be discussing the gay science, which is where Nietzsche makes his famous God is Dead proclamation. We see that whole madman in the marketplace scene. We see little inklings of his ideas, such as eternal reoccurrence. He gets to talk about culture, morality, and we start to see some of these broader ideas of Nietzschean philosophy start to form. Um, so some of the sections we're going to be focusing on include 108, 124, 125, 341, and 343. And the reason I selected these sections primarily for our discussion is because they really center around morality and how Judeo-Christian values and Christianity or religion at whole shapes our perspective of morality and also what happens to culture once it's stripped of divine morality or divine purpose. Next, we get out of order a little chronologically. In week three, we're going to be discussing on the genealogy of morals, which is really a deep dive into morality and his criticism of Judeo-Christian values. Uh, talks about sin, guilt, bad conscience. Uh, we see the breakdown of what is slave morality and mass morality uh, through Nietzsche's eyes and the problem with slave morality and, and this ascetic ideals. Um, as far as sections we're going to be focusing on, if you can't read the whole book or if you haven't read it in the past, primarily the first and second essay within this text. Following up week three, a perfect companion piece is Beyond Good and Evil, which we're going to be discussing in week four, where Nietzsche does an even deeper dive into morality, discussing those same concepts from the past book of slave and mass morality. And we start to see where Nietzsche starts to become more of an existentialist, or at least be able to fit into that category that we define and, and kind of put the umbrella term of existentialism over, because he starts to put an emphasis on man's actions in this concept, this famous concept for Nietzsche, which is will to power. So we see this emphasis on action, we see this, this uh, encouragement of man defining his own values, and we see all that shaped within this book. And in week five, we have to read one of his most famous books, which is Thus Spoke Zarathustra. This book, is quite long and it can be quite confusing on your first read. Hopefully once you read some of these books, things start to make a little bit more sense. But in general, it's quite long, so I'll tell you the sections we're gonna read. But this book is quite fascinating, especially on a reread. I'm looking forward to digging back into it because you do see the parallels and the parodies uh, between Nietzsche's story of Zarathustra and the Gospels in Christianity. But there's tons of interesting stories aphorisms, all that hidden within this text, and the sections we're going to read and, and at least focus on in our discussion include of the three metamorphoses, of the flies of the marketplace, of the higher man, and most likely others as well. And most likely others as well. So hopefully you guys can join me this November and read Nietzsche with me and join in on the fun and on the discussion of each video. And I'm going to link all these physical books in the description down below as well as freeze PDFs if you don't want to buy the copies. So with all that said, let me know what you guys think if you're excited for this series, uh, what you guys got lined up, and uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more content, keep an eye out for this series very soon, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.